In this video, I'm gonna show you what's in my sewing basket. Are you ready? If we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's woman. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping it home, subscribe and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's take a look at what's in my sewing basket. I had this sewing box out the other day to sew a button on a coat, and I thought you might be interested to know what do I keep in it on a day-to-day -day, on a day -to -day basis. And this is my small sewing box, and I just tend to use this one for mending when I've got some little projects to work on. So let's see what's inside. Well, first of all, this is what it looks like on the inside. And the top of it can actually serve as a pin cushion because it's kind of got a soft top there. And then there's a little pocket right inside there that I keep just a little bit of a needle pouch there. And I got this at one of my quilting shows that I attended. But when you open it up like this, I've got in here a bunch of needles that I've used for various reasons. And some of them still have the threads on them. And there's even a few tiny little straight pins that I might use for embroidery or something like that. And then these pins here with the yellow heads on them are quilting pins. And I've got several pages in this little needle book that I can use. So there's this. And that just goes here in this little pouch right here. And then this tray here lifts out, but let me show you what I have in this tray first. So here's the top tray in my box, and I always keep this pair of scissors in here. I don't know why, I just like using them, so I always keep these in here just for snipping thread or extra little things. A pair of thread snippers. And they work really well. And then I've got a pair of really nice embroidery scissors. And I use this to clip fabric. I don't really like to use it to clip thread. I keep them in their little sheath so they stay nice and sharp. And then if I just need to clip thread, I'm gonna use something like this or this. I've got a seam ripper. You use this to kind of pick seams out of garments or the threads out of a button. This is a measuring gauge and I would use it if I was trying to put a hem in and I needed to be very careful with how wide or how narrow it was. So this little ruler helps me with that. And this is just something that I use to help me block out seams if I need to really like rub a seam to get a seam to lay flat or something like that. I would use this for that. A tweezer again to help pick out threads. And these two are marking pencils and let's say I needed to mark something on a garment that I was working on, well then I would use these pencils to do that. They're just white chalk pencils and then they just rub out easily. This is a, a Micron um, pin and it is permanent on fabric once you press it. So I would write whatever I wanted. Let's say I was creating a label for a quilt or something. I would write what I wanted to write on there and then I would press it with a hot iron, set the iron on there, hold it for a certain period of time and then it would stay permanently. And this is the tiniest little screwdriver and it works for your sewing machine and different little things like that. I think this came in a little kit from something my grandma used to have. And then over here I just have a box of quilting pins. I don't know where this pattern came from. Here's my thimble which I use all the time. This is just another 
little uh, needle packet that I have. I got this at a, another quilting fair and I just keep needles and pins and things like that in it. They're just quick and close at hand. This is a pull that I could use to pull a needle through some really difficult fabric. Another thimble. A little pencil sharpener for the pencils that I use. A couple of extra buttons. This is very important to me now. It is a needle threader. And then this is just another little um, item that I just use when I need to lift up a button or something like that. So now let's see what's on the bottom layer. Well, I've got a couple of cards of extra buttons. And this is just so I don't have to go digging through my button box, but these are just shirt buttons. And then a little packet of needles. And these are pretty much just general sewing needles. Here are some embroidery needles, and there's only a few left in this pack. A little round of... Um, Quilting pins, straight pins, more needles, and this is actually just a little sewing kit, something that you might get if you were at a trade show or something like that, but there's a couple shirt buttons in it, and then there's a needle, only one needle left, but typically in these kits, you'll have several needles, and the needles will all be threaded with different color thread. A couple of spools of thread, this is just an all-purpose quilting thread. This is an all-purpose thread that I might use to sew on a button, particularly if it's a shirt button. This thread's almost used up. Just a little piece of fabric scraps. Black quilting thread. And then I always have a couple rows of tape in here. You never know what you might need tape for. Another pair of scissors. A couple pens and pencils for marking things. A ruler. A number one, I don't know why that's in here, but different little patterns that I've made. Something to mark a pattern with. And this is, would be a, 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 an element to help me mark a um, seam in quilting. A point turner. An empty spool. Some marking chalk. So a this is something you would put on your thread to kind of help to pull it through. Tiny beads, I don't know why these are in here. This is like stitch witchery. You would put it to maybe stitch in a hem, only instead of stitching, you'd actually just press it in. It would kind of bind the fabric together. More thread, which you can be used uh, when I'm quilting. It's kind of a universal color. More thread some um, little guides to put on top of my quilting machine. Don't know why this dice is in here. And just instructions for a rotary blade. And a miscellaneous rubber band. So that is what is in my sewing box. So what's in your sewing basket, your sewing box, your sewing kit? Tell me in the comments section below don't have a sewing basket, then let me encourage you to get one. As homemakers, there will always be many to do or some other little sewing task. And it's really nice to have everything in one place. You can purchase a very simple starter kit at your local fabric shop or online, or you can make your own. You can use a box or a tin with the lid or you can use a basket that you have around your home and fill it with the basic items. I will link a, a list of essentials in the description box below. And if you're interested in buying one, I'll also link a couple that you might be interested in purchasing online. It will be an affiliate link, so if you click on it, I might get a little compensation, so thank you very much. And here's the thing. Right now, we are all going through a very difficult time, and it can be very stressful. And sitting with a sewing project in a quiet place, maybe by a window with some music playing in the background or a good book on CD or on your Kindle, 
can be a way to relax. So this could be a time to gather your mending in one place and sit and work on some of that. Or if you've been wanting to work on an embroidery project, now's the time to take care of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of In the Laundry Lab where I showed you what's in my sewing box. As I said, this is my little sewing box, the one that I use when I have mending projects to take care of. And I think you might also enjoy my video on how to sew a button on a coat or how to keep white shirts white. I will link them above with an iCard and I will also link them below. And if you have any laundry challenges, tell me in the comment section below or send me an email. And maybe the next time I'm in the laundry lab, I'll be answering one of your questions. And just so you know, I've raised three children and I've managed a home for more than 45 years. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying goodbye. I will see you next time.